dedicated to empowering you with information to make positive choices and be advocates for your overall well-being. Welcome to The Health View. Welcome to The Health View. I'm Yvonne Dunnitz, and this is Dr. Laura Chan and Dr. Margarita Otramaya. And today, we're going to be talking about the health benefits of physical exercise, as well as exercising your brain. So let's jump right in, ladies. Let's talk about the heart and strokes and how exercise can make a difference. Okay, I'll start. <laughs> um, very important, actually. I, we've been using the analogy of the car. Mm -hmm. and we put fuel in our body, and that would be like gasoline, and exercise would be like the mileage. So it's very important to use up our calories and consider ourselves with how we use it up, you know, the different forms of activities we use. Some people are more kinetic, some people move more, and some people are more laid back. And then there are different kinds of exercise, like cardiovascular, and then weight training, core, so there's wonderful things to talk about today. Yeah, so how about if we talk about related to the heart, um, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, the whole aspect of cholesterol. And sure, exercise is a powerful way to help improve heart health. We know that it helps uh, lower high blood pressure over time. Mm -hmm. It helps lower cholesterol and improve your good cholesterol while lowering the bad cholesterol. Um, and can help with stroke prevention as well. So it's really powerful. It's more powerful than many medications out there. And, and it's something we can do every day on our own. And it's good. So how about from a non-insulin diabetic point of view as far as that's concerned? I think that's helpful too because exercise, physical activity can have a, a response related to that, correct? Again, it's very important to think of it as what happens with all the energy we consume when we eat. Um, it's stored. And muscles are very oxygen driven and they're generating energy as for us to move, to ambulate, to run, to use our body. So with insulin and diabetes, what ends up happening is it's stored in inappropriate ways causing problems, therefore the accumulation of the blood sugar. When you exercise, you consume a lot of oxygen and you consume a lot of glucose. And that is really what's coming in in the food form. So. Again, back to that analogy, exercise is the means by which we use up our energy. And with it being accumulated in those people that do not exercise, diabetes is a very high risk, uh, obesity, gaining weight. And the other way around, exercise is a wonderful means by which we can actually lose weight. I have a question for you, Dr. Margarita. Do you recommend a certain type of exercise for your diabetic patients? I know you work with quite a few diabetic right. patients. So it's very important to understand the different kinds because some people might just do weights and not do stretching. So weights are anaerobic. You know, they really don't need as much oxygen as it would be for running and bicycling and doing activities in which you are increasing your rate of breathing. Mm -hmm. So it really is very independent for each individual. So if somebody who has not been doing a lot of exercise should not really start a very vigorous activity. We see that a lot in the winter when people have to shovel their way out from home in the snow. And if they haven't been very physical, if anything, that extreme strenuous activity might not be a great idea. You know, this so, is, yeah. Don't you think that's I, a, Well, this is a perfect point to say to people too. If they haven't been physically active, that before they jump into any exercise program or plan or whatever, they really need to talk to their physician about it, the Absolutely. primary care provider, to make sure that they're in the best shape in order to do it. But at wintertime, and it's very true, there are many people that have heart attacks mm -hmm. or injure themselves related to going out there and shoveling. But I think sometimes when we start exercise and we're so enthusiastic, <laughs> we're ready to jump in and, mm -hmm. and we can sometimes hurt mm -hmm. ourselves. But we're going to get back to that whole thing of hurting oneself. But related to osteoporosis, Osteoporosis. Now, there's an, an area where exercise and physical activity can really help. So Absolutely. Why don't we talk well, about that a little bit? Osteoporosis affects a lot of women and men, even, exactly. especially postmenopausal. And it's when our bones become more brittle, essentially. And uh, 
exercise is crucial for helping to rebuild bone strength, and it really needs to be a weight-bearing exercise. Um, so even if someone were to go for a hike and carry a backpack on their back, that's a way to do something that can get you outside of the gym if someone doesn't really care to go to the gym. But you know, if you do like to go to the gym and, and want to do some weight-bearing exercises there, then that's a wonderful way to help prevent osteoporosis or help manage it if one does have it. But again, you certainly want to check with your doctor to make sure you do it at the right intensity for yourself. And also, there's a different way to approach exercise if you're pregnant versus not. Absolutely. Right? You, you want to not do exercises on your belly and things like that. I think uh, when we bring up exercise, I'd like to structure it by talking about the aerobic exercise mm -hmm. and then anaerobic, like I said earlier, but then, for example, the core, which helps us keep us pretty much straight. And dealing with osteoporosis, what ends up happening with exercise and gravitational, such as like walking, running, or doing mild um, weights, it would be that the bone has little micro traumas and the microtraumas bring in the healing and the bone forming cells. And so it's super important actually to maintain that gravitational activity. And it could only, it could be just a very good walk. It doesn't have to be, as people think, you know, hours on end on the treadmill. It can be a competitive activity. Some people like to play racquetball or play tennis mm -hmm. or swim. And so really what we want to think of it as being up in New England, I think it's the understanding the being outside versus being inside. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just getting physical, getting active. We mentioned earlier once we were talking about dancing, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. activities that also bring some fun into your life and bring out the good feel-good hormones called endorphins. And uh, an aerobic exercise really is an exercise that brings in oxygen into the system, correct? Mm -hmm. So why don't we talk about the different types of aerobic? Of course, you mentioned biking. You mentioned, I mean, walking, walking. and hiking. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are some other things that are considered aerobic? So anything that would actually increase your oxygen demand. So running and anywhere, anything that would go with that. So if you want to play tennis, if you want to play racquetball, if you want to take some roller plates and go out and do that. But yet again, injury prevention. I'm always going to put that little star right beside it because if, for example, if you have a flat foot and you decide to go running, if you don't have the proper shoes, you might end up having a problem with um, your arch and how you can injure yourself. And then here you had all the best intentions you go out and to prevent, you know, heart disease and to oxygenate your lungs, increase your oxygen capacity, and then you're injured mm -hmm. and all the good benefits are now stalled because now you're wounded and in bed. It's true. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things related to injury is a lot of people don't necessarily stretch before, warm up their muscles, mm -hmm. get themselves prepared. They usually gun start it and go right into it and that causes some difficulty. I want to add on to something uh, Margarita said where uh, about interval training which is sort of a buzz yes. right now that's pretty popular which means that you vary the intensity of your exercise while you're doing it and you don't even have to exercise as long so someone doesn't have to run five miles you can actually just do a shorter period of, of exercise but change the intensity. For instance, you can go for a walk and then pick a tree off in the distance and walk a lot faster towards that tree for a period of time and then walk more slowly and then again uh, increase the intensity for a while. And I heard about a study where for type 2 diabetics actually that type of exercise is, is even more effective than just going for a consistent walk. Though of course both are very useful. But um, I thought that was an interesting Yes, intervals are wonderful because it actually is kind of somewhat confusing the muscles. So on one end it goes like, oh, now you have me running and now you have me walking. And the lungs have to adapt. So, so is the heart, you know. Mm -hmm. Usually when you start exercising, you want to reach a peak heart rate. And it's usually calculated as 220 minus your age. Mm -hmm. And when you reach that peak heart rate, as long as you get there, and you don't want to stay there all the time, but you hit it and then you relax and then you hit it again, and then you relax. And like you said, a very good point. Some people don't have one or two hours a day to devote mm -hmm. to activity, but when you do intervals, you can do that in 20 minutes, mm -hmm. 30 minutes. I usually have a little trick I actually share with my patients. I say, look, why don't you select four songs of your repertoire? And usually a song can last five to seven minutes. Mm -hmm. So multiply it by, by that, and it ends up being maybe a 40, 20-minute 
calculation and all of a sudden you didn't even notice the time and you have a fast song, you have a slow song and then now you know it's okay I only have one more song to go and then I'm off and it ends up being very quick and useful. Okay so we've covered aerobic yes. oxygen producing and then anaerobic which is strength training and that's to build the muscles correct? Correct. So strength training is important not only for those people who are physically wanting to do lifting and all of that but Let's talk about those as our body ages, the importance mm -hmm. of strength training. What are your thoughts about that? Because that's a really important component. Not only that, I think ultimately as your muscle is um, bigger, because mm -hmm. as you do muscle training and strength training, your muscle will increase, and that gives more definition. When we look at weight and we look at weight management, we look also at fat to muscle ratio. So that it brings up a very interesting topic of the um, thin obese person. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is they might not have a high weight, but they have very atrophic muscles and their muscle to fat ratio is off. That's the whole thing of the BMI. Right. And so BMI, what does that discover? I mean, you like? how does that go about? Why, do, why should people know their BMIs and is that important for them? It is important for them. So BMI stands for body mass index and it really, uh, uh, Above a certain BMI, you'd be considered obese, and below a certain BMI, you'd be considered you know, overweight. And then it's important to track what your body mass index is uh, because, again, like Dr. Margarita said, you can be a, a thin person but not be considered as healthy as someone who's you know, more fit at a certain point. So it is important to check in with your doctor and know what your BMI is and have it tracked. Okay, and way. then there's the other area of flexibility exercise and that is to make sure that the body's stretching and moving and expanding and things like yoga can help mm -hmm. with that. What have you seen in your practices and the importance of encouraging people to stretch and to flex and to open up their bodies and to enjoy it in a variety of ways? So I, I divide exercise into hot exercises and cold exercises and that is really determined by that heart rate that we were trying to achieve that 220 minus your age. And so a hot exercise could be the running, the bicycling, you usually sweat quite a bit, and unless you get to a certain heart rate, then it wouldn't really be burning your calories. Mm -hmm. The cold exercises, for example, are for people who are maybe beginners, mm -hmm. or they run pretty hot already. Mm -hmm. And so I consider that like water aerobics. I love water aerobics mm -hmm. for the purpose of <laughs> being able to be cool. Mm -hmm. Your heart rate doesn't have to be that high. Mm -hmm. You're doing um, an exercise, but you you have a very low risk of injury. And it's gentle if you it's have arthritis. Very gentle. Yeah. It's gentle on the body. It and yoga. Put, yes. Yoga. Pilates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. So what we also know is that exercise is great, and research has shown it, for our mental health. It helps us related to stress and anxiety. It raises the endorphins in the body, and it really helps people to have a general sense of well-being. That's one thing I was going to say about yoga is the feedback I get from patients when they start a yoga practice is they really notice an improvement in their mood and their general exactly. well-being and their stress management. They often will learn breath techniques exactly. and just feel better in their bodies and really for one reason or another feel a big shift in their mental state. I so think that could be added with increasing circulation. So as we are breathing and our heart is pumping and our heart rate is going up, we are bringing blood to areas that don't usually get blood and that includes our brain. And so as we increase the circulatory component, we bring more oxygen to the tissues and then as the blood is coming in, it's also removing toxins that have been accumulating. And so very much, um, it has a lot to do with well-being, mental and healthy well-being because of that endorphins. And endorphins are feel-good hormones. Endorphins comes from the word similar to morphine. Mm -hmm. So it is your internal feel-good. Yes, yeah, you produce it way. yourself. And, and the beauty, uh, one of the things about yoga is there's a variety of different breath work that we teach people. And each has a different component of how it affects the body in helping it to relax and calm down, but as well as to help it release the toxins when it, in the body. So let's talk a little bit about the Can brain. I ask you a question Please. first beforehand? Yeah. I'd, I hear people are intimidated about getting into yoga. That's one feedback that I get. And as a yoga teacher, I'd be yes. curious what you tell people about that when it's they're It's very interesting because there are all types of yoga. Mm -hmm. 
And the I, hot one. There's the hot one. I mean, there are all types of yoga. And I always tell people it's really important to investigate and learn about the different types because not all yoga is good for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I do let your yoga dance for special populations, specifically for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, you know, people that may be more seated components, as well as kundalini yoga, which is more mind, body, spirit yoga, mm -hmm. and then with children. But there are particular yogas that, you know, stay in one posture or longer periods of time or physical movement where it can be very hard. And some people that like more movement, it, it's difficult. I think yoga isn't for everyone, mm -hmm. but there are all types of yoga out there. Right. And it's nice to explore and perhaps go to a facility where you can taste different types in a sense and get that yeah. idea. But that is true. No, my, it's not all. My mom tells a story where she tried one yoga class and she injured her back a little oh. bit in it. And she said that no one warned her that yoga wasn't a competitive sport. Oh. Because she, you know, she was looking at the people next to her and trying to keep oh, up. Yeah. And um, it, I think she jumped in a little bit too quickly. See, and someone like learned, that? Yeah. Gentle yoga. Look for the mm -hmm. words gentle. <laughs> gentle yoga. Because yeah. some are very aggressive and very, yeah, you have to be very, very good. For myself, yeah. I could not take those really hot yoga. I'd pass right now, it wouldn't be good yeah. for me. But what I would love to do is talk about, we've talked about physical exercise, which is really important, but I'd like to talk about the brain exercise because to maintain our cognitive function, we need to exercise our brain. It's critically important to do that. Mm -hmm. So that there are ways to do that and fun ways to do that. For instance, word games. Mm -hmm. Word games are great mm -hmm. in order to help. Um, Memory, I, I always tell people, a great way to keep the mind going is create a grocery list or create a list of whatever else you need and write everything down. Then an hour later, go, before you go back to the list, try to see how much of it you can remember. Go a different route. Don't always take the same route to where you go. What are the things? What other thoughts Ooh, do you have? One of the things that I like to do for myself <laughs> yes. is when I get food from the bulk bins at the store and yes. you have to write down the numbers yes. on the twist tabs, yes. is I try to remember what those are instead of writing them down. Very and good. make my way to the front. And, That's wonderful. And I either you know cause the line to have to wait a little bit as the cashier looks it up because I forgot it, or the cashier usually compliments me for remembering That's it. That's very or the other. good. Yeah. And you know... Um, um, calculating numbers within the brain, counting in the brain is a very good way to keep the brain sh uh, sharp. What are the types of things that you do? I actually recommend something called Lumosity. Are oh, you guys familiar? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Talk about that. So Lumosity, uh, um, L-U-M-O-S-I-T-Y dot com, mm -hmm. is, has been done by Columbia University, MIT, and it evaluates your brain in multiple areas, so reactivity, recall, pattern recognition, and these are really, really important to do these brain exercises to prevent Alzheimer's, to maintain that curiosity within our brain. Sometimes we, when we're going to work, like you said, I always try to go to work through different ways yeah. and find, make sure I don't get lost because sometimes I do, I get lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but this Lumosity is amazing, you know, and you're going to have a family account and it tracks you from what you did before. So you're always trying mm, to compete with yourself. That's great. Mm, so yeah. if you did a good job last time, you want to actually beat it. You beat yourself from previous and it keeps track. It's a pretty good activity. I I think that's one to go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you make a point about these brain exercises being good for Alzheimer's, but we didn't mention that physical activity is also very good for Alzheimer's prevention. And attention deficit yeah. disorder. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and, and dementia too. I right. mean, anything, you see, it's the combination of the physical, the excellent nutrition, feeding our bodies in mm -hmm. a good way, feeding our minds and our brains, helping them to continue to be sharp, as sharp as possible. Mm -hmm. It's when we, the goal is not to become a couch potato. Right. The key is not to just be sitting, even in front of that computer long periods of time. The goal is to be more active, to get out, to get fresh air, to right. be actively feel involved. Feel good. To right. feel at the best we can possibly be. And I'd like to add one more thing in terms of the 5Ks. So again, in the spring and in the summer and in the fall, I love when we're in a community together. Mm. And when I participate with the 5Ks of different kinds, you know, you're out there with a lot of people, everybody's feeling good, everybody's healthy, it's a family activity. Back to even the brain games, being able to be at doing a board game and being board together as a great. family. Exactly. Great yeah. And that's what you want to encourage because a lot of families are kind of going their own ways. But if you do board games together and you are involved, it helps to bring that sense of 
close And you make a good point that it's important to do what you enjoy exactly. to get the physical or mental activity. I know for me, if I try to get on a treadmill, I feel like a gerbil on one of those wheels, and I just really don't enjoy it. But you for, love dancing. But I love to dance. So tell really us, how do me. you feel when you dance? Oh, I mean, I you feel, just shine I even talking do. about it. I feel so joyful, and I don't even realize that I'm getting exercise because I just feel uplifted, and my stress disappears, and I might even uh, just put some music on while I'm getting ready to cook dinner and dance around my kitchen and which there's is great. got 10 15 minutes of exercise which is on. great and a lot of people yeah. don't think about that right. all you have to do you're at home flip the music right. on that you really love and just dance you and there's nothing wrong with dancing alone exactly. and just having a good time and with you it don't because have you're to moving put on, around you don't have to put on spandex and go to the no. gym especially if it's there are two feet of snow outside exactly just find something you enjoy doing at home i Personally, I like to dance. That's one you that I You know what I love to do? Yeah. What do you love to do? Hula hoops. <laughs> oh, that is fun. That is so that much is fun. Hula hoops. There's something oh my called God. hoopnautica. Yeah. What right, so that? all these apps, right? I wanted to mention the Couch to 5K <laughs> yeah. is an awesome one yeah. that trains you to go to 5K, and that gives you the altruistic way of giving. But then hoopnautica, you're playing with the hula hoops. It brings out the childhood innocence, and of oh course, mm -hmm. it falls, and then you giggle. And it's uh, sometimes people feel self-conscious about doing it, but it can be just in the in the living room. It can, you know. So I it's used really to love really hula hoops as a child. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Now they have the hula hoops that actually have padding on it. Have you tried those? And weighted. Oh they're, my God! They're, they're weighted wow. and padded. I yes. So you really that. have to go around and around. You really have to have the strength to do it. But it really makes it. Difference. It makes it skin. Wow. See, we're all giggling. <laughs> we just the whole hula hoop concept. Funny. Not to mention Zumba. Zumba is great. great. You know, it's music driven, mm -hmm. yeah. it's structured, it's got the beat, it's definitely bringing on the endorphins. And then you have the Pilates, mm -hmm. right? Now, what's the difference between Pilates and Zumba? Oh, well, it's quite different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, what's yeah. the difference? Well, I, my experience with Pilates is that it's less music driven. Okay. So um, Zumba would be great for someone who loves to dance um, and, you know, I. Sometimes we'll follow the instructor, and sometimes I'm off to my own beat over on the side of the class. And Pilates is, um, my experience is that I've been on a mat, and you might be working with a stretchy band or um, a resistance circle, um, and it works on a lot of toning. It's also very enjoyable. I find that I get really sore after a Pilates class. Oh, Pilates I know, are hard. I know it's that hard. it's working. And that's the other thing to remember. It's not good to do the same exercise every day. You need to give the body a time to change and relax and right. rest, and you need to mix up the aerobic type of exercise with the strength training exercise, right. and as well as the flexibility. And so, the brain exercise. And the brain. They're right. all different things. We keep very busy just taking <laughs> care of ourselves right. and trying to remember. What are your favorite things to do as far as exercise? So, well, concerned? the hoopnautica, okay. the lumosity for the brain, yeah. and then the couch to 5K. I love being able to think that I'm giving back to the community and involving the community. When we talk about Pilates, it's also involving like ballet, like Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. So the wonderful thing about exercise, it is just so vast. There's really no way you can say there's something you won't like. Well, there's right. a variety. And the thing is to find what you really like. Exactly. And even related to the brain, too, is also to learn a new hobby. Mm -hmm. Learn a new language. Mm -hmm. mm. Try, you know, a, a, to learn a music and an right. instrument. Get up and learn dancing. Yep. Why not? Right. <laughs> I want to put a plug in for walking, too. I walking is great. I think it's that, my favorite thing to do. Right. I love I don't going on walks. I think it gets enough credit as a form of exercise. And it's such a great way to be outside. You it can is. do it with your friends. You can. And it's, it's, you and can it's even easy. listen to a podcast and exercise your brain at the I was the just going to say that. It's and then the true. buddy concept. A lot of us where exercise can be a social I always worry that we always think that being social means going out to eat or having an alcoholic beverage. Right. It might not have to be that. You no. can go out and play. I wanted to also talk about the new rage, which is about these, you know, Spartan races, the Tough Mudders. I did the zombie run the two zombie. years ago. <laughs> what is so much that? Fun. What is that like? What the else? zombie <laughs> run is a 5K. It's a, it was a fundraiser for brain research. And um, you get three flags that you wear on your belt, almost like in touch football or flag football. 
and you start running, and then there are people who their job is to be a zombie on the course, and they try to grab your flags. And if all three of your flags are gone, then you've been infected. Oh, no. And, <laughs> and what does that mean? And it's an obstacle course, so you're crawling under wire and uh, things that zap you and going through the mud. And oh, my goodness. It was, it was wild. I, I am not a fast runner, so I so you got, got attacked by zombies <laughs> oh very quickly. Goodness. Now, our listening audience, I don't want you to be intimidated to no. think that exercise, you have to do all these things. You could simply, when you go grocery shopping or you go to the department store, park a little further away and start and walking there are no in. zombies. No, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> there and no the color zombies. run, you know, yeah. they hit you with colors. <laughs> oh, no. You know, so when you come after the color run, you're just covered in a rainbow. Oh, we have right. them in here in Nashville. That's and the other day, it's like, oh, the color run was today. I missed it. Because yeah, oh, <laughs> so everybody was colored. That's funny. So another great aerobic exercise is, um, I know there are step classes, but what I do is instead of taking elevators wherever I go, I go up steps, up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Down, up and down, wherever I go, I That's consider it my aerobic exercise. exercise. So it's wonderful. So parking a little further and then walking in. I, I do make a point, though, at night I don't park further. I always park close and then under a light just to, you know, be a little more safer. But, okay, so let's look at all the different ways that, that we can help people in helping them to physically be active for their bodies and their brains. So let's summarize. There are three different types of exercise. Aerobic. Anaerobic, anaerobic and flexibility, yeah. right? Okay. Aerobic brings in the oxygen into the bodies. It can be like cycling, biking, walking, skipping, hopping, yep. jumping, dancing. Your heart rate goes up. Yep. Anaerobic is strength training and, you know, with weights and things like that. And flexibility is with stretching, movement, and yoga, yep. and types Pilates, of things like that. that sort of thing. And tai from chi. our bodies, yes, Tai Chi and Qigong and mm -hmm. things like that. And you're great at that, too. Yes, <laughs> I do are. practice Qigong. It's yes. been yes. important for me. A very mm -hmm. important component. So when we look at all of that, we know that physical activity is the key to help our bodies be vibrant and to help us have a long life, right? Mm -hmm. And that exercising our brains is just as important as exercising, exercising our bodies, right? Yeah. The both go together. Critically Absolutely. important I do. Very much. because we want to be sharp, we want to be able to think, we want to be able to respond quickly, and we want to be healthy and being able to lead the active life and be able to do all portions of it from not only the daily things like check writing and different things or whatever else that we have to do in making lists, but to take excellent care of ourselves. Right. So I think we are in very much agreement that the most important things that people can do is to eat excellently, right? Good Absolutely. nutrition, plenty of Absolutely. fruit, plenty of vegetables, eating well-balanced yep. meals, physical activity, mental activity, and to take excellent care of themselves. If you have any questions, please go to info at ycdholistichealing.com. In the meantime, take great care of yourself. We look forward to seeing you next week. Be well, take care, and lead a healthy and happy life. The preceding program 